Hey guys, it's Adam from the Dimensional Gaming Squad here, bringing you with another video for today. And uh, this one, uh, this is one I originally wanted to upload, and since I now have some free time, somehow, I was like, okay, might as well record it and upload it, because I really wanted this video to get recorded and uploaded as quick as I can, because, well, I, um... Would like to move on to the next part of the this video. This video will, this video series will not be uploaded one after the other, unless I don't upload at all. Between them, because um, this will actually involve me doing something in the games, and if you can read the title already, this is basically my a story through my through a nuzlocke of each region, basically. Or Pokemon, obviously. A Nuzlocke for each regional Pokemon. So, basically, the, if you don't know what a Nuzlocke is, it's basically, uh, don't worry, I got the Bible of, I got the Bible here. This is four, this is five, five pages of me talking about a Nuzlocke. Oh, God. <laughs> this is talk, this is five pages of me talking about a, a story for a Nuzlocke. Okay, this ought to be interesting. I got a drink here just in case I do get dry throat. Uh, because I just had a crap ton of salt. Uh, okay. The rules of a Nuzlocke, if you don't know, is that the first Pokemon you encounter on each route, you need to catch. Well, you can catch. You That's the only catch you can do on that route. Pokemon that are given to you, I am going to accept because, well, otherwise then I can't use my starter. And for the game, this is... I want to use my starter! Because, <laughs> well, it's a good starter. <laughs> Um, if a Pokemon faints, it's dead. You can't use it again. You either need to put it in your PC and never use it, never touch it. Or you release it. I didn't do that one because, well, I'm not doing that. Because I don't want to release my Pokemon because I hate releasing them. And if I get Pokemon I already capped... If I get if I encounter a Pokemon on a new route that I already captured, I am having this thing called a duplicate clause where I could just run away from that battle or defeat that Pokemon... And go on to the next one until I get a Pokemon which I haven't seen or which I haven't captured before. And um, I'll do this as an example from Fire Red. No, not Fire Red. Uh, Ruby. Route 101, I encounter a Zigzagoon. Catch it. Route 102, encounter another Zigzagoon. Jesus Christ, what's going on with me? I can run away. Go again and encounter, let's say, a C-Dot. I could cancel that. I could capture that. Catch that. Okay. Uh, another rule is I must nickname all Pokemon to form a closer attachment to them and so I can actually cry when they die. Uh, trust me, I do have a few deaths that happen in this, which I was rather upset about. And that is all the rules. Um, I did set one more rule, which is just for Gen 6 games onwards to Gen 7 and 8. Simply because the EXP share... It's just broken. Either I use the EXP share, but I need to have my battle style set to set. Uh, so I need to switch Pokemon when the Pokemon, my opponent, has a Pokemon out, meaning I can't get clean switching. Or I can turn off the EXP share but, and have the battle style to switch. I'm going to have it to set because, as bad as it sounds, I have to rely on this EXP share, especially through... Um, the other games. This is the easiest region, and I lost quite a few Pokemon. <laughs> so <laughs> I will need to rely on that EXP share. I just need to find out where they are in some other games. So this is basically my story going through my first ever Nuzlocke attempt of Pokemon Y. The I thought, okay, this is like the easiest region to do a Nuzlocke in. This is the easiest region to go through. Like it, can't, I can't lose that many Pokemon. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> So, let's get right into this. Um, th this just... God knows how long of me talking. I do expect this video to be longer than my ranking videos. <laughs> anyway, let's get, right, let's get right into this. So, after creating my character, which I named Nuzlocke Adam, because I knew I was going to forget that I was in a Nuzlocke eventually, so I named it Nuzlocke Adam. Okay, so, um... Got... Created the character, got out of my pyjamas, went to say hello to my friends, got stabbed by Picky, not Picky Peck, got stabbed by Fletchlin, said hi to a Rhyhorn, 
Went to the next town over. I can't actually remember the name of that town. I think it's Ambrett, but I know it's not. Uh, <laughs> and I got to choose my starters. Chespin, Fennekin, or Froki. I chose Froki for obvious reasons, because uh, it's my favourite Pokemon. <laughs> if I do not choose Froki, then I'm clearly saying, hmm, hypocrite. <laughs> okay. I could just, if I don't choose Froki, I could just picture Greninja just staring at me going like, you fucking what? You what? So I had to, I basically picked Froakie for bias reasons, and I did have a plan going into this. If it was female, I named off, I'd name it after a friend of mine, whose favourite Pokemon is uh, Greninja. Unfortunately, it was male. So I had to um, think of a new name, and this was last minute, but I'm actually really proud of this name. Because the starter is normally seen as the leader of your group, I decided, okay, why not name it, name it after a leader? Which is, um, which I find kind of good, but not. Because the real life version of the, of the person I named it after is not a good guy at all. Like, yeah, he made a crap ton of money. And he made some people noticed and famous. But he treats them like slaves. However, in the movie that's based off him, he was a bit nicer. But I simply named Grenin my Froakie P.T. Barnum for the simple reason, A, he's a leader of a huge group, and that's what Froakie will be, a leader of a huge group. So that's what I did. <laughs> so after that, I got into my first battle against my rival, well, one of, one of them anyway, Shauna, who chose Fennekin. And uh, that was a rather easy battle. I did not lose any health. Uh, I think it was actually... I was actually really lucky. I got a one-shot crit. And that was like, okay, this is a good start to the lock. Okay, I have not got any Pokeballs yet, so that doesn't really matter. Um, so after I showed Froki to my mother, uh, she said, okay, go on an adventure. Go. I don't want you here anymore. Okay, can I take the Fletcher? No. Okay. Right horn? No. Okay. Okay, I guess I've got. I guess I'm not having anything. Okay, so I just have a Froakie, uh, P.T. Barnum. Uh, I need to call them by their actual names. Um, P.T. Barnum. Yeah. So, after being stopped by Rhyhorn, I went further on, and because I forgot to get Pokeballs from the nearby uh, shop, my Nuzlocke didn't start then. So my first static encounter, which could have been a Pidgey, I missed out on. So my f my f so after being taught how to catch Pokemon and get given ten Pokeballs from Serena, that's when the Nuzlocke actually started. So now we go on to now this is a slight bend in the rules, but I'm gonna counter anyway. My first encounter on Route Two, because Route One doesn't have any grass, is a Caterpie. And uh, I was really annoyed then because I was like, oh, I could have had a Pidgey, but no, I got a Caterpie. So um. I caught it because it's a Pokemon, and I named it B3, with so many E's after it. I actually, don't, I actually do not know how many E's I put after it, but I named it B3 as um since Butterfree says free, and um because Ash made his Butterfree B3. <laughs> it sounded great when I named it, but it doesn't anymore. Uh, nothing really much happened on Route Two, I guess. That, that's pretty much it. Nothing happened on Route 2. I battled a trainer, caught a Caspi, and that's it. Then I went to the Sand Saloon Forest. Now, um, out of the many Pokemon which are available there, the Elemental Monkeys, Caspi again, Fletchlin, Pidgey, Scatterbug, I'm pretty sure there's a few other Pokemon. I got probably the best Pokemon there, and that was a Pikachu. I caught it, and I named it Four, because it was a male. And um, so my my Nuzlocke's actually going pretty good. I got a PC Barnum, I got a B3, and I got a 4. We know which one would be the sacrifice. Obviously, it'll be 4, and no, I'm joking. It'll be, it'll be B3. B3 will obviously be the sacrifice. Okay, so after I got through Sandstone Forest and bashed in so many trainers, I almost lost PT Barnum on, and I would not have forgiven myself if I lost that Pokemon that early. I didn't know. Thank God. I went to Route 3. And I caught, and my next encounter was, unfortunately, the, probably new sacrifice, Burmy. And what did I name it? I named it Let It Grow. Yeah. 
Burmy female. Let it grow. I named it that for a, sim for a simple reason. I couldn't think of another word, so why not after a song in a movie which I haven't watched? <laughs> And that is about a plant growing. <laughs> so, oh God, what's going on with me? So, um, yeah, Burmy. Yeah. Uh, so that's my noon sacrifice. Um, made it to Sansun City, no problems with the trainers there. And I uh, went to Route 22. And because I knew there was a chance I could have got a Riolu, which I would have loved. Instead... I got a Psyduck. A Psyduck on Route 22. I named it Misty. For the simple reason, Misty had one in the anime, so that's that's it. Uh, now, I'm starting to think... This is... I forgot to do something. Around that time, B3 evolved twice, so it's now a Buster 3. I just forgot to... I just forgot to write that down. So, uh... <laughs> Caterpie is now a Butterfree, so that's great. And thanks to uh, B3... Yep, yeah, there, there we are. There we are. It evolved in the gym. I won the bug badge thanks to 4 and B3, now Butterfree. And I went on to Route 4 after obtaining my EXP share, where I officially set the battle style to set. And my Route 4 encounter was a skissy that I named Nala. Uh, after Nala from The Lion King. Because uh, I really couldn't think of a name. And I thought Nala's a good name for a female Pokemon. The first female Pokemon I caught on this Nuzlocke. And I could have named it after my friend. But I know she's not a big fan of Skitty or Delcassi. So I was like, eh, maybe not. Uh, basically nothing else happened on that route. I almost lost... Uh, I thankfully didn't lose... Four, but I almost lost it in against a damn corfish, which should not happen. <laughs> now my next, okay, so that makes I believe six Pokemon on my team now. Now I went into Lumio City away, and then this is where I got my after battling um, Professor Sycamore. I think his name is. I hope so. Anyway. Uh, I got to choose between any of the Kanto starters, and I chose Charmander. I named him Demon, after Demon from my Fire-type Mono Run, and I think my Flying-type Mono Run as well. I can't remember which one was which. Uh, oh, it wasn't in my Fire-type Mono Run, because I had a talent. Wait, oh. Did I have a I can't remember, but I know I named it after Charizard from my Mono Run, okay? <laughs> so I named my Charmander Demon. Bit of an uncreative name, but whatever is my opinion. And on Route 5, I caught a Bunnelby, which I named Luan after a character from a TV show which I watch. Uh, my favourite character. And they both have buck teeth, so that's kind of why. That's a bit offensive, but I, I like rabbits, so why not name it after a character I like in the TV show? So Luan, Luan's a Bunnelby. Uh, okay, um... Also on Route 5, P.T. Barnum evolved whilst training. Yes. Uh, so it's not a frog here. However, whilst battling Tierno, whilst I was training Nala as well. Nala was killed because of... Um, yeah. Because it took one too many vice grips from the Corphish. So, uh... I knew the Corphish started to get me. I just didn't know which Pokemon it would kill. So, uh, it, it killed Nala. So, um... After having a brief funeral for Nala. I didn't really grow much of attachment to her. I replaced her with Luan after I got rid of that battle and I was and I was already a bit agitated with Tierno. I never really liked Tierno but that just boosted the agitation a bit because it's like you killed my first Pokemon. I think I hate you more. But surely that can't be a foreshadowing of anything because I can't lose another Pokemon to the same guy right? And was training, um, yeah, okay, uh, yeah, on my way to the palace, after going through that useless, um, town, which has the name rater, so it's not really useless, I just couldn't be bothered to name it, I just couldn't be bothered to remember the name, uh, Campfire Town, I think? Demon evolves into Charmedian, was on my way to the palace to get the, uh, Poke Flute, and, um, 
on Route 6, I went to Tall Grass and I found a Honech. And that, as you may know, is a ghost type. So I thought, I thought it was kind of convenient that my first Pokemon was killed. And then the next Pokemon I encounter, which I can catch, is a ghost type. Now I was like, hey, that's probably symbolising something. So I caught it and named it Nala's Ghost. And, uh, yeah, Nala's Ghost. <laughs> Wonder how long that one will last. Um, and I replaced Misty for Nala's Ghost because I don't really want to have any redundant types. But with a Nuzlocke, I have no control over it at all. Uh, I try my best to keep it out of these um, redundant types, but it's going to fail eventually. Um, the static encounter after getting the poker flute is the Snorlax, which is why I went to get the poker flute. Urgh, I hate that Snorlax and I hate that palace part. I really do. Um, I named it Blubby because it's for the blubber. Yeah. Snorlax will be... Okay, I'm just going to say I should have used Snorlax and replaced it for Luan or probably Let It Grow. That would make more sense. But I think no, I just put it in my PC box and um, just used it as a HM save. Well, for strength, mainly. Uh, my Route 7 encounter, if you ignore Snorlax, was a Volbeat. Which I was already annoyed about, because that's just as worse as Let It Grow. And so I caught it and named it Lightbulb. As a little bit of a reference to a friend of mine, who... Uh, <laughs> Whose last name begins with L A D, but the computer in at our school said L E D, which is L E D for light bulb. So uh, I was like, hmm, that's hilarious, because it's based on Firefly. So that's right. Page two, <laughs> and um, I got a few, three, four more counters. God's sake, four more counters. Uh, encounters. Uh, okay, so um, in connecting cave, which is the Otherwise known as Zubat Roost, you can guess what Pokemon I caught. A Wisma. That surprised me as well. I thought I was going to get a Zubat. But no, I named it. I got a Wisma and I named it Unmute. Because it gets louder when it evolves. So that's kind of the opposite of Unmuting. Thing. Uh, it's like a volume button. I should have called it Volume Up. I don't know. <laughs> I was regretting it as soon as I'd done it. But I liked it. I like Wisma. Uh, my Route 8 encounter was Surviper, and I could not have been happier, because that's my favourite Pokemon on that route, if you ignore Absol. But I don't think you can catch Absol on that route. I actually do not know what you could catch on that route, but I, but I was glad I got Surviper. And I was like, hmm, why not name it after my favourite member of the Furious Five from Kung Fu Panda? So, Viper! That's what I did. Uh, okay, uh, Route 9 encounter was Hippopotas. Hippopotas! And um, I named it Bertha after the Elite Four in Sinnoh. After the Grand Type Elite 4 member in Sinnoh. So that's good. Wow. 18 minutes in and I'm not even halfway through. Oh god. This is going to be interesting. Now. Uh, my next capture was Cubone. The Dry Bones in Glittering Cave. Fun. <laughs> uh, that's all I could say about that. And um, now I must say. I was. Um, now. For most. Even a regular playthrough or Nuzlocke. The hardest gym in Kalos is the second gym. And that's so bad because it's a rock site gym that has five weaknesses and it's still bloody hard to beat. <laughs> so this was one I was legitimately sweating for. Because the only Pokemon I had that can help was Misty and PC Barnum. Because um, there's no way I was going to swap out any of my other... But, well, if you think about it, it's just PC Barnum. Because I wasn't going to swap out my other Pokemon, which I was training up already, just to get type advantage. That's what I didn't do. And was training to get uh, a Diggersby to get a ground type, Luan was unfortunately killed whilst fighting a Lunatone in Glittering Cave. Shortly after I caught Dry Bones. And um, that, that death wasn't really upsetting. But to find out a character which I wanted, which I which, to find out a Pokemon which I kind of needed to get killed, it did kind of sting. 
And that's just making me think, oh god, when I eventually get to Hoenn, I'm not I'm not looking forward to going against Tate and Liza, because they have a lunar zone. Uh so I had to replace Luan with an already ground type, so dry bones. Um on Route 10, I found an Electrike. I wanted to catch it, but Dry Bones like, no, you don't need it. Threw a bone at it and killed it. Okay, guess I'm not having another Electric type. Four, you're still here. And now we're at the second gym. Okay. Now this one, I knew I was going to get a death from. The question is, I did not know who. So, um, in the second gym battle, I led off with Dry Bones. Because I had a type advantage and I didn't really care for it because I didn't want to lose PT Barnum. So, I let off with Dry Bones. Dry Bones was one-shotted by Amora's takedown. So Dry Bones has died literally 10 minutes after I caught it. <laughs> Which is actually kind of hilarious when you think about it. And um, then... Uh, after getting my revenge on it and taking that one down, I um, I had PT Barnum out, which took down the um, Amora, but got paralysed in the process. Now, this was a tough decision for me, because I knew the last Pokemon was Tyrant, and it came out now. And I knew that thing was going to use a move which can finish me off. Because I had, like, yellow health. And I did not want to lose P.T. Barnum. So, after a tough choice, and with so many Pokemon which couldn't really do much against Tyrant, I knew I had to sacrifice a Pokemon. And I sacrificed B3. I knew it was going to die eventually, but unfortunately it had to go. So, um, B3 got... I swapped out B3, so then P.T. Barnum can live on, and it got killed by a Rock Tomb, which I kind of saw coming. Had a clean switch into 4 to try and paralyze it. It works in exchange for t 4's life. 4 has also died, which was kind of upsetting. Because 4 was a Pokemon I wanted to stay on my team. Because I was like, okay, this could be a great Pokemon. Because Raichu's amazing. I just need to level up a fair amount. And I'm not far away from the Thunderstone. The Thunderstone is an item I can get after I beat the gym. And now it's the next thing I found. After 4 died. Which was really annoying for me. Because I was like, so close to Raichu! I've... I don't think I actually used a Kanto Raichu before. I, I think I have. I can't remember using it. And um, so with that, uh, <laughs> I lost half my team in the second gym battle. I won it after sending out uh, PT Barnum. No, uh, what happened was, four went out, paralyzed Tyrant. And after four died... I went, I sw swapped out P.T. Barnum, used the Water Pulse, took it down. Because there was no way I wanted to lose anymore. And I was already risking enough from losing my last good Pokemon. If I lost P.T. Barnum, that could have been the end of the Nuzlocke already. But no, no, okay, yes, let's keep going. Uh, also, shortly after Luan died and uh, replaced with Dry Bones, I got a Fossil. Jaw Fossil, Jaw Fossil, or Sail Fossil? I chose the Jaw Fossil. Um, I restored it after my gym battle, which was kind of stupid now that I think about it. And I named it after... Well, since it was a Tyrant, I named it after a friend which I knew likes Tyrantrum. So, Lucas. I named my Tyrant Lucas. You're welcome. Um, so I had to replace, so Tyrant replaced, um, 4, Unmute replaced, um, B3, and Bertha replaced Dry Bones. So surely with a brand new half team, I got a few, I got a bit of training to do. And it was annoying. It was very annoying. But I knew it would eventually be helpful in the end. So that's what I did. Whilst I was training, Unmuse evolved into Loudred. So, yeah, the volume's going up. But Bertha was died whilst training. I believe it died to a Sigilyph. So I replaced it with a Viper. And um, that's when I went to battle Karina. 
for the first time with her, her two Lucarios, which I was dreading. But um, luckily I had a demon, so that kind of ex beaten the battle rather easily, and I did not see that coming, actually. I thought it would, it would have been a bit harder of a battle, but never mind. Okay. I'm just being very stupid, apparently. Uh, so I just wasted my time with training. Uh, on Route 11, my encounter was Nido Reno, which I named Riley, which I actually don't have a reason why I named it Riley, but I was just hyped it was a Nido Reno, because I wanted a Nido King, because I knew you could get a Moonstone in Reflection Cave, which isn't that far. Um, so I replaced a Viper with Riley and got right into Reflection Cave, and my first encounter was a uh, Solosis named that I named Psyche Kuso, which is... Uh, the main character, which is a psychic in a way, in um, pretty much the only anime apart from Pokemon that I've watched. And um, that anime is called The Disaster Cipher Psyche K. And when my uh, friends found out that was the only anime I watched, they are like, what is wrong with you? Watch Naruto. And I was like, no, that's like 700 episodes. No, thanks. Uh, so, yeah, so... I got a good team, Psyche Kuso's in the box, ready to be used after another Pokemon dies. And that's exactly what happened. Riley was killed in Reflection Cave against the first trainer, which had a Linoon. I was really annoyed, because I, I got focus energy, took a hit, got a low roll damage, got it to use double kick, but no, high roll. God damn it, Riley, ah, damn it. So I took down that trainer with Unmute, and then Unmute was killed in Reflection Cave, was training. God damn it, I'm bad at this game. <laughs> Route 12, I caught uh, another Pokemon. Oh, wow. Well, uh, yeah, so after I got through F Reflection Cave, I went straight to Route 12 to catch another Pokemon, and it was a Chassot. I wasn't particularly hyped about Chassots, because I never really liked it. So I just caught it, named it Pitch, and just had it on my team along with Psyche Kuso. Simply because A, well, it's a type of advantage against the next gym. And B, it'll probably be a sacrifice eventually. So that's what I did. So yeah, went to the third gym. And Psyche Kuso and Pitch died whilst battling the gym trainer. It was against a Heracross. And I must say, Pitch surprised me actually. Because... I went into the gym going like, okay, Pitch, you're definitely going to be a sacrifice. But then I noticed, hey, it had a flying type move. And I was like, that could help. So I sent it out against the first trainer. One shot. Second trainer. One shot. Third trainer. One shot. Fourth trainer. It dies. Okay. Yeah. I was not like I was growing an attachment to you, but... Goodbye, Pitch. It didn't exactly hurt, but it... Ah, it did sting. It stung more than Luan and four. Um, four was the one that hurt the most, but, oh, that one stung. And Psyche Kuso, I didn't get to use it much, but, oh, it just learnt Psy Shock. And B3 learnt Psy Beam before it died, so that was really annoying. Uh, <laughs> but PT Barnum evolved into, um, uh, Greninja was us beating that gym trainer, so that's good. Uh, with every down as an up. There's two downs and one up, so I'm kind of one low. And I beat in the third gym trainer and won the knuckle badge. I won the cliff badge before, now I won the knuckle badge. I think that's what it's called anyway. Oh. Yeah, I think it's a knuckle badge. What is the name of the badge in Hoenn? The fighting type one. The brawl badge? I won the third badge, okay? The fighting type badge, okay? I can't remember what they're called. Okay, um... And that was... That battle was easily won with no problems to uh, Demon and Nala's Ghost. Because they didn't have... Well, Nala's Ghost was immune to the fighting types. Demon was the best choice since it wasn't weak to dark. Fighting. Ah! Wasn't weak to fighting. And... <laughs> yeah, no problems. I'm sure I used... Um, another Pokemon. I can't remember why. I think those are the only two I used. And that was kind of good that I did. Because both of them evolved after that battle which was actually one of the most successful gym battles just not the most successful gym challenge <laughs> so i now have a charizard a Dublade, a greninja and three other pokemon which uh yeah one of the, well 
Oh, what? I actually got... Oh, yeah, I had Lucas as well. Sorry, I actually forgot about that. I had Lucas. <laughs> so, yeah. My team at the moment. Uh, PT Barnum, Demon, Lucas, and Nala's Ghost. Because Psychicus and Pitch died, and I didn't replace them. I didn't replace them for a simple reason. I was getting two more Pokemon given to me, which I wanted. And the first one was a Lucario named Acero. Named after my Steel-type Lucario in my Steel-type Mono Run. Probably Fison. Uh, I can't remember the names. <laughs> I think it was Steel. Okay. But I named that Lucario Acero. And it it did it. It did really well. And my next one was also on Route 12. But was given to me. And that was a Lapras. Which I named after my good friend. Which I know likes Lapras. Because who doesn't like Lapras? And I named it. And I named her Emily. Because Lapras happened to be a female. So that's like, oh my god, that's really convenient. <laughs> so I got Emily and Ace throw new to the team. Now, nothing much happened. I beat all the trainers and I got to the fourth badge. I got to the fourth gym. Won it with no problems. No problems at all. Uh, Demon just kind of burnt that place to the ground. To the ground. Uh, <laughs> Having a fire type going to a grass type gym. Now, you kind of need to expect, yeah, that's going to go down. Uh, Emily did put help a bit. It used Ice Beam against the um, Jump Luff. And that's all it did. But that's okay. Route 13, I called a Dug Trio and named it Trio Trio Trio. I wanted a Gibble, but whatever. I didn't want it anyway, apparently. Um, and I went straight to the Lumius. Oh, yeah. Also, um, while storming the power plant, Lucas evolved into Tyrantrum. So now I have a fully evolved team apart from Double Eight, which will be a while. But, um, yeah. Lucas has now evolved, and that was what's still in the power plant. So, and that's good it evolved because it learns earthquake as well, and I needed it for the next gym. The fifth gym battle against the electric type, I won easily thanks to Lucas. Now Lucas, uh, Lucas did a lot of damage to pretty much all the trainers. It didn't do all of it though, because Nala's ghost helped a bit by taking down the um. Excuse me. The Heliosk. With um, a Shadow Sneak. But that's it. Um, Route 14. I caught a Weeping Bell. Named it Ding Dong. For absolutely no reason whatsoever. And now that I'm saying it. It sounds really badly. <laughs> really bad. The 6th gym was beaten with little to no problems. Although I almost lost Emily to one of the trainers. And that was around 23 HP left. And that was in the red. So. Don't worry. There's a closer death I almost had. And that was against... Um, Ah, uh, who was it against? But I know what the Pokemon was. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, wow. Uh, yeah, there was two, actually. I forgot about this one. <laughs> I stormed the Pokeball Factory with little no problems. Nothing bad happened. Pornyard I found on Route 15, which I wanted to catch. But Emily was like, eh, no. So, um, it kind of sucks because I wanted it. However, in Frost Cavern, I found a Bergmite. I was not going to let Emily kill this one. <laughs> So I uh, caught it easily. I named it Iceberg. Even though I pressed no with the nickname. But I could go to the name rater. And I still haven't done that. But I just named it Iceberg. Because I would have done anyway. Uh, then Demon almost died. Whilst trying to beat Team Flare. And that was because. One of their Pokemon had a rock type move. And I survived on. Well Demon survived on 2 HP. And I was really surprised. I was like oh my god. Demon, you cheated death. You cheated death, demon. Okay, so I swapped into um, Ace Road to take that rock time move easily and finish that battle as well. And um, yeah, but after that, I successfully beat some Team Flare out of the Frost Cavern, which is nice. And um, on Route 17, I could have caught a Deli Bird, but I didn't want one. I didn't think I would use one anyway, so it was killed by Ace Road. Winningly killed by Astro. Um, with great help from Nala's Ghost, I beat him the 7th gym as well. So, um, yeah, PT Barnum wasn't really that useful in that gym because it didn't have a dark side move. And um, Astro wouldn't be much use, even though it's just neutral psychic. Lapras, I mean, Emily, I wouldn't even risk. Lucas, you would crunch, but I didn't use you because Nala's Ghost was more useful with Night Slash and Shadow Sneak. And um, what was the other one? Uh, well, I can't remember my team. That's really bad. 
Uh, Nas, guys, Emily, Acero, Lucas, P.T. Barnum. I definitely can't remember. Demon! Demon! Man, that's bad. I can't remember my team. Demon um didn't help much. It did some, but not a lot. But Nalus goes did most of the work and did what Lucas did. Just beat an entire gym. And then Team Flair's Cafe Base. I just taken it over with no casualties whatsoever. Didn't lose any Pokemon. And if you're paying attention, I haven't lost a single Pokemon since the third gym. So I've beaten... Four gyms. Oh, sorry. Yeah, four gyms without losing a Pokemon. So, I was honestly surprised. I was like, I'm on a hot streak. Nothing can stop me now. Took over Team Flair's base with no casualties. No no deaths. Page four, I think. <laughs> uh, and at Lysander Labs, there it was. The legendary. Yvelsal. I was not going to risk losing this Pokemon, and I was not going to risk fighting it. So I just threw my Master Ball at it. And I named it Oblivion. And uh, that was pretty much it. Uh, defeated the final boss, Lysander, losing no Pokemon with so many close calls, especially against that Gyarados. I was scared for that Gyarados. I thought I was going to lose a, bat a Pokemon, but I didn't. Okay. Route 18, I caught a Durant and named it Grant. In Terminus Cave, I caught a Noibat and I named it Echo. And then I went to Terminus Cave, even though it was optional. I wanted to get the Dusk Stone to evolve Nala's Go, so I have a fully evolved team. That's what I did. And that really was helpful, because then I went against Professor Sycamore with a full team of fully evolved Kanto Starters. And Nala's Ghost came in handy with Venusaur. And uh, then... That's simply because I wanted to see how good it is, and uh, it didn't take it out. It didn't take it out, but it did something. But then I was like, wait a minute, Demon does a better job. Done. Uh, PT Barnum took care of the Greninja, and I believe I sent out Emily to take care of um, Blastoise. Because it had Thunderbolt. Uh, thank you to, to Clement. Uh, on Route 19, I... Uh, Oh, 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 man, this is the closest one I was talking about. On Route 19, I caught a Sligoo named Aqua, and this one was really hard to catch. I wanted it just in case of emergencies, and uh, <laughs> it was an emergency to catch it, because whilst catching Aqua, Lucas lived on 1 HP after t tanking two Muddy Waters and a Dragon Pulse. And I was like, oh my god, Lucas, you're such a trooper. Thank you. Whilst fighting Tierno on the bridge, um, unfortunately, P.T. Barnum was killed by the Roserade. Oh, no. I, that P.T. Barnum was one of the Pokemon which, I, I mean, okay. I beat him four gyms with this entire team of six. I grew a very fond attachment to all of them. And then... I lost P.T. Barnum against a Rose Raid when I should have swapped out. That death was on me and I was depressed for the next few days. Because I was like, oh, P.T. Barnum, you're the leader of the team. Who's the new leader now? I gave the new leader spot to Demon since he was the next member of my team, which was there the longest. But still, that, that death was really damn emotional. I uh, that one that one I was close to crying on. <laughs> uh but Tierno, I mildly was annoyed by you before, but now I despise you. Tierno, you're my least favorite rival. You've always been my least favorite rival. <laughs> Tierno. And this isn't really an honourable strategy of what I did afterwards. And I don't normally do it, and I probably won't do it again. But I replaced PT Barnum. With Oblivion. Because I, because from then, I was I dedicated to myself. I made a vow to myself. I'm not losing any more Pokemon. Ten Pokemon was alright. I mean, I can live with ten Pokemon going down. Because none of them really mattered apart from four. Riley, Luan, and maybe Pitch. But eleven. 
That's way one. That's one too many. And it and that one being P.C. Barnum. That one hurts. It really did. Ah, uh, and I remember for the rest of that Nuzlocke, I I wore the badge which I had a Greninja on the inside of my shirt as a tribute, I guess, to that Pokemon. Simply say, you may have gone down, but, was, but I'm, you're still with us. <laughs> on Route 20, moving on, on Route 20, I caught a Tremnant and I named it Willow. Willow, Willow, uh, for absolutely no reason. Uh, <laughs> and um, in the Pokemon Village, when I could have caught another Pokemon, which was a Moongus, it was killed by Oblivion. I did it on purpose, though, because I wanted the experience, because it was rather underleveled. And I've beaten the 8th and final gym with no problems whatsoever. And that battle was for PT Barnum. Because I wanted PT Barnum to at least make it past the 8th gym, but fortunately it didn't. That was entirely my fault there. So I thought, why not do the 8th battle in his honour? Demon and Nala's Ghost did a great job at honouring him, along with Ace Row. And um, <laughs> and on um, Route 21, my next uh, encounter was actually a Swablu Horde. If it was Altaria, I would have caught it. But since the Swablu Horde, I just killed them all for experience. So, yeah, I killed them all for experience. And that was when Oblivion had Snarl, which does damage to all of the Pokemon. Now, uh, my last encounter... Yeah, this is. Was on Victory Road. And that one was a Geodude horde. Which was like, okay, clearly I'm not catching any more Pokemon anyway. So, um, I just... I was actually going to take them down all, all of them with Sir from Emily. But I decided not to. Because after all of them used Rock Blast, Emily was in the red. And I was like, okay, I know some of them have Sturdy. And I do not want to risk losing Emily. So... I fled the battle because I did not want to lose another Pokemon. And I finally got there. I finally got to the Pokemon League. Uh, it was a very long and emotional journey. It was very quick in the middle, actually. But very long at the beginning and very long at the end. <laughs> Sorry, P.T. Barnum. Still with us forever, along with the others. And because my highest level Pokemon was Nala's Ghost, that was at level 66... I was like, okay, because I want an even number for all of them. I changed all of the Pokemon to 6-6. Six, six, and Oblivion and Emily were the lowest level of 58. <laughs> so, that took a while, but <laughs> I got it done in the end. So, all my Pokemon now are 6-6. Six, six, and now, they were ready for the ultimate challenge. The Elite Four. Place your bets on whether I win, on whether I lose, or if I win, how many Pokemon do I lose? My team, from order of obtaining them, Demon the Charizard, Lucas the Tyrantrum, that, I already messed it up. Demon the Charizard, Nalus goes to Aegislash, Lucas the Tyrantrum, Ace Road the Lucario, Emily the Lapras, and Oblivion the Uveltal. How many will I lose? <sighs> Place your bets. I'll wait till 43-45. Right, bet's done. So, I started with the easy, what I thought was the easiest Elite Four member, which was Drasna, the Dragon-type trainer. So, I started with her, thought it would be the easiest, and honestly, it was no problem. It was actually rather easy. But unfortunately, because of a certain Pokemon, and I got a bit carried away, I lost Ace Row to Neuvern's Flamethrower. I did not know I had Flamethrower. And it was really upsetting to find out, oh no, I lost Ace Row. Ace Row, Lucario, if you don't know, is my second favourite Pokemon. So, I lost my first favourite Pokemon, I lost my favourite Pokemon yesterday, and my second favourite Pokemon the day after. And I was in pieces, I was like, oh no, not even one Elite Four trainer in, I'm already down to five Pokemon. Ah... And that was really annoying, so I had a slow plan for the um, Steel Sight trainer. So, Ace Row 
pulled a lot of weight in the team, especially through the 4th to 7th gym and 8th. Um, but then it died from a one-shot, which I did not see coming. Ah... Uh, it was rather upsetting, but Acero learnt Dragon Pulse, which is why you sent it out. I mega evolved it as well, but clearly that wasn't enough. Acero, you along with PC Barna will be mostly missed. Next Elite Four member was Seabold. And I've beaten him at the cost of another Pokemon's life, which was Nala's Ghost. Nala's Ghost was actually a Pokemon I thought was going to make it through that challenge. Because I was like, surely you can't lose. Because, come on, it's Nala's Ghost. You can't kill a spirit that's already dead. No, apparently you can. Especially when you have a Barbarical. This is why I hate Barbaricals, people. Using Razor Shell. It was in attack formation. It had minus two attack. And it's still one-shotted Nala's Ghost. I wanted Nala's Ghost alive! I needed it! <laughs> I needed it for the next gym battle! I need, I need it for the champion battle against the Tyrantrum! Or, well, actually better would be the Aurorus, but um... Ah! I was really annoyed about that, because now my two Pokémon with fighting-type moves are dead. And they're both steel types as well. So the Pokemon with the most resistances are dead. So my only advantage, gone. I'm down to four Pokemon now. And I've got three more battles to go through. And I'm just going to say, after I lost Nala's Ghost, my hands were shaking so much. People were like people are just walking by because I did this. I was doing this last bit at college because I had so much free time. They're like, uh, you okay? Your hands seem to be shaking a lot. What's going on? Um... Uh, Nothing much. Probably going to lose Nuzlocke. What the hell is Nuzlocke? I don't know anymore. I was nervous. Because these two Elite Four members were the easiest. <laughs> what would the next two bring? <laughs> next was Malva. The Fire-type trainer. I... Surprisingly, that was the easiest. <laughs> I swept Malva with Lucas. With a simple Earthquake, 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 Rock Slide. And that was because Talonflame. So, <laughs> Lucas, you swept an Elite Four member. You swept a Gym member. And I'm pretty sure you swept a few Team Flare admins as well. As well as um, Serena's team once. And now... Uh, we go on to the last Elite Four member with, a sh no shadow of a doubt, the hardest one to go against was Wickstrom, the Steel Side member. I've beaten him with so many close calls. I lost, I almost lost Emily, almost lost um, Demon, almost lost Oblivion. Lucas, <laughs> this was another close call because I. It wasn't really as close as the the Sligu capture. But it was really close because it was against a Pro Pass, which I knew had Flash Cannon. But on the turn where it was about to use Flash Cannon, where I knew all out speed, I misclicked from Earthquake and I pressed Dragon Claw. Oh, Lucas, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I almost killed Lucas for a misclick. And I didn't want to lose any more. I lost a Baker's Dozen now. I didn't want to lose any more. But I'd beaten Wickstrom after killing that Prova Pass with Earthquake and swapping into um, Demon when I knew that uh, Aegisash was going to use King Shield. So that mega evolved Drought Flamethrower one shot at that Aegisash. <laughs> And now we're on to the champion, Diantha. Now, four Pokemon left against six. The people that were surrounding me, watching the Nuzlocke, were like, yeah, you're going to lose. I was like, you know what, all of you, go away. You clearly don't think I'm going to win. Jeez, screw you. 
I'm not going to name Pokemon after you now. You're my friends, so but I'm not going to anymore. Mm. So, um, I led off with Oblivion against a Harlucha. That was the best choice, because it used Flying Press. I used Oblivion Wing, healed up my damage, and took away his health. Oh, also, bit of a side note, before I went to Elite Four, my brain was a big idea to save outside the Pokemon League, go into the Pokemon Center, heal up, and go in and save. After I did that second save, I realized, oh crap, I didn't get any potions. So I had, I went in with 21 potions, no revives, and 40 full heals. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with me? <laughs> so that was a bit of a disadvantage on my part. But, <laughs> Uh, so, after Oblivion beaten Halucha, Tyrantrum came out, and because I knew it was going to use a Rock-type move, I sent out Lucas, which is the only one I can take a Rock-type move. And, um, Lucas took the Rock Slide, and I gave the Dragon Claw back. One-shotted it, then the Gudra came out, Dragon Claw, one-shot. That's half the team already down. Then the Aurorus came out, which I was surprised to come out before the Gudra. After the Gudra, because I thought it come out before. The Aurorus, um, I, I was scared, so I swapped into Emily and just spammed Surf until it died. I used one of uh, Rose's, I used one of Diamond's full restores as well, so that was good, I guess. And then, uh, then Gorgas came out. I swapped into Demon, Mega Evolved, Flamethrowed that thing, dead. Then it was just one versus four. I was pretty confident I was going to win. Because now it's a Mega Gardevoir versus Mega Charizard Y. Two flamethrowers and I won. The Nuzlocke is one with 13 casualties. And if you're wondering, the battle against AZ after, Lapras swept that team <laughs> with no problems whatsoever. Almost dying, but that wouldn't count because the Nuzlocke was won after I went to the Hall of Fame. But that Nuzlocke, it was harder than I thought it was going to be. And um, this is... Um, now, I have a list of rewards I like to give um, some Pokemon throughout this. Um, this will probably be in the next Nuzlocke, which I do. You get to choose the region and the, you get to choose the region I do. And um, I'll just go from there. Just pick the region and I'll go to the next... I'll go to that region. Um, now, re rewards, we'll go with the most obvious one, most, emotion most emotional death, P.T. Barnum. It's the one I started off with, the, it's the one I started off with, the one that seen through pretty much three quarters of my adventure, maybe not even that, seven, eight, seven eighths, and died to a stupid move on my part. It had extra sentry, I thought it would one shot hit, but it didn't. And... P.T. Barnum was the only death on my part which I generally felt bad for. Which, um... I cried, but I was glad that I was able to have that badge of Greninja on me throughout that final battle. I had that badge on there as a symbol that the spirits of Nala, Luan, Drybones, B3, 4, Bertha, Riley, Unmute, Pitch and Psychic Kuso along with P.T. Barnum would be there for, for with me throughout that those battles. Ace and Nala's Ghost joined in and they were close second and third for the um for the uh rewards. Um Ace Row was actually third because Nala's Ghost I thought was actually gonna make it through when it was fully evolved because it was like a really strong Pokemon and overpowered. Fortunately not overpowered enough. So Nala's Ghost was second place there. Um, so those spirits of those 13 Pokemon with, were with me and the rest of my team throughout those last battles. Now, um, next reward goes to most valuable dead Pokemon. Now, th this one goes to, obviously, the Pokemon that did the most work that I thought was the most useful that has died in the Nuzlocke. And... I think I'm going to need to give it to Nala's Ghost. I was going to give it to P.T. Barnum. But kind of after I got Lucas, I rarely used it. 
I only used it to um, swap out when Demon or P or Lucas were in trouble. So then it could take a water type move and then finish it off. So PT Barnum was only there just for show, I guess. Uh, I'm really sorry to admit that. Um, and the most valuable Pokemon that survived the Nuzlocke, without a doubt, Lucas. Um, Demon was a close second, but Lucas, jeez. Um, well, it swept a team. It swept an Elite Four member. It swept a gym team. It swept a few ad admins. It pulled through so many times. Almost died three times. Lucas hung in there. Demon almost died twice. But it didn't do as much stuff that impressed me that Lucas did. Emily would have been third because um, Oblivion, I didn't really get much time to have on my team. Because it was only there for the 8th gym and Elite 4 and that's it. Emily was there since, after, since before the 4th gym. It hasn't done much but it was there to just be an extra slot. And I made a promise to that friend, if I find a Pokemon that's female that I know you like, it would be the most important Pokemon on that team that I would not let die, and I'll keep it on that team. And that's what I did. Um, if there's any other rewards I can go to, um, probably the best ba gym battle. The best gym battle. <laughs> uh, okay, the easiest gym battle is um, Clement. Hardest, Grant. And um, my favourite gym battle that I did was Olympia. It will always be Olympia. Olympia is my favourite Kalos gym leader. And I love all battles I do against her. Um, easiest Elite Four member, Malva. Hardest, Wickstrom. I didn't lose Pokemon, but it's still really hard. Uh, my favourite battle from the Elite Four members? I'm going to need to go with Seabold. For the simple reason, because... Seabold surprised me. With minus two attack on that Barbarical, it one-shotted <laughs> Nala's Ghost, which didn't have high defense, but that is besides the point. I thought it would have taken the hit. Like, me and my friend, who is just obsessed with Pokemon as me, were just like, did that just happen? So, uh, and that was when everyone's like, oh, I'll, I'll solve this guy now. And that was like the major turnaround in that Nuzlocke. Because I was like, no, I'm not giving up on this Nuzlocke. <laughs> and I didn't. I don't really give up on things. I hate giving up on things. I'm glad I won. It was really down. It was really tough. <laughs> but Lucas was the most valuable Pokemon throughout the entire Nuzlocke. Alive or dead. It pulled through so many times. It was there since, the second, since after the second gym. And it was a great replacement for four. Which um, I was going to have on my team. But unfortunately it died. So uh, yeah. That is all for this Nuzlocke. And wow that's an hour. I told you this is going to be a long video. I did not think it would be that long. So that's all for this Nuzlocke. The Kalos region. Done. Now. It is up to you guys. Which region you know you'd like me to do next. Kanto. Johto. Hoenn. Ho Hoenn. Hoenn. Sinnoh. Unova. Alola. Or Gala. Leave in the comments below which region you'd like me to do. And um, if there's one comment saying one region and another comment saying another, I'll pick the one that was there first for first come first serve purposes. And um, don't tell me what Pokemon I, what stars I should pick because I know which stars I'm going to pick for each region. Okay. Uh, if there's anything else, yeah, the gameplay I'll be going through will be the... Uh, fire Red, no, sorry, Leaf Green for Kanto, Heart Gold for Johto, no, not, yeah, Heart Gold for Johto, uh, I would not be doing the Kanto gyms, well, I may do, but <laughs> I'm going to say the Nuzlocke ends after the champion, and that's just the extended credits of the Nuzlocke, which I'll do after that one to beat Red, uh, which I'll probably lose, but <laughs> whatever. The Hoenn will be... um. Ruby, uh, Sinnoh will be Pearl, Unova will be black and white, or black, because I don't have white, um, Kalos is Y, Alola will be Sun, uh, 
because you could go to hell if you think I'm doing the uh, Team Rainbow Rocket thing. And the Ultra and the Cosmo thing. I'm not doing that, no. And Sword and Shield, um, it'll be Sword because I don't have Shield yet. Uh, actually, yeah, that's a point. Do not pick Gala. I'm going to wait till I get shields, and then I'll do my Nuzlocke on that, okay? Because I'm not I'm not resetting my sword game without being able to transfer my Pokemon there. So don't pick Ka Gala until after Christmas, because that's when I should get it, hopefully, anyway. The money I get from my birthday and Christmas, that's when I'll get shields. Um, so you know what I do. Because everyone gets money on Christmas and birthdays, so um, yeah. That's all for this time. If you liked what you saw, leave a like, or heard, leave a like. Leave a comment, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, please leave in the comments down below which region you'd like me to do next. I like all of them, apart from Kanto, but I'll do Kanto if you want me to. And I'll see you next time.